The idea of inviting an architect to design the space came from Humex. They did a small competition and they invited three different architects to submit proposals of what the exhibition could be. At the end, after uh, interviewing the three candidates, uh, we took the group decision uh, at the Guggenheim that we wanted to work with Frida. Her proposal was the one that worked with the space, but also respecting the integrity of Chipperfield's architecture. The architecture, as you can see, is very potent. Uh, it has a very strong language. So we decided to create something that was a little bit more horizontal, that wouldn't compete with, with the verticality of the space, and that wouldn't create divisions. So the basic idea is to have a system of ramps or wedges um, that you can see here. And it's basically uh, working with the idea of a slope and a plateau. So if you have these two wedges and you pile them up together, you have a plateau, if you have a single uh, element, then it's a slope, and you can play with that in, in different uh, planes. I was very surprised when, uh, when we finally saw, saw the project inside the space, you know, and, uh, and saw the ramps. Uh, you're always nervous, you know, you, you see models, you don't know what, uh, I mean, you get a sense of, uh, of, of what's going to happen, and you play around, and, uh, and, and we were always in dialogue, but then, like, seeing it present in the space and being able to walk in the ramp and to see how, uh, this continuous surface creates a dialogue, one, with architecture, but also between the works, no? and I think it gives me a new vision of my own exhibition. You know? I think that it's always a challenge to conceptualize a show and an artworks for your own space and then to send it to an unfamiliar space as exhibition designer is a big thing that we're interested in and kind of what the creative process revolves around is what the qualities of that space are. You can get a lot out of pictures, but there's something to be said for like how big something feels or how much space something kind of takes up in your um, perception. For Under the Same Sun, we had two tower galleries in New York. So yes, the show was split between the two levels. While it was nice to have the second gallery that had the taller spaces, a space like Humex is so big and the ceilings are so tall that it really kind of changes the playing field a little bit in that sense, especially since there are some ceiling hung objects in the show. The installation here was at first very challenging, but also very exciting because the room has a very high ceiling, so the posters can go up more, they can play more with space. So at first I drew around the floor plans of the museum, but it was very hard from not visiting the museum to have an exact idea of how that would work. So when I came here, when I arrived at Jumex, I could check if my drawings were working well, and I also could make some final adjustments. In relation to the Guggenheim's installation, we have more ceiling supports and less uh, wall supports. Here we have three entries for the piece, from the elevator, from this main room, and from the, the other corridor back there. So the position of the projector and the classifieds were also considered in relation to that. And I think it's still you have room for the audience to go around and to play with the pieces. Jonathan de Andrade invites uh, visitors to move those posters of the Museum of the Man of the Northeast. No, it's really built on the notion of what does the mixed race of the Americas means. No? So it's not only about finding his own identity as a man of the Northeast, but also our own identity as, as inhabitants of this continent. No? And on the other hand, uh, you have Amalia's work, which is activated at different moments in the exhibition and which comes from two historical anecdotes. On one hand, the disappearance of set theory and the intersection from elementary school programs in Argentina during the dictatorship. And this related to the idea that the military junta at the time prohibited more than three people to gather together in the streets because, of course, it was seen as a potentially subversive. No? And in activating the performance, she recognizes that historical facts, but also she moves uh, towards the future in thinking ways in which we can form new ways of intersections, new ways of community together. It's always really satisfying to be here for the performance aspect. The piece uh, exists stationary, but I feel like it exists stationary because it changes all the time. There's a double circulation thing, so it's like how can we welcome people to decide to enter the space 
uh, this way, where the, the pieces, or perform towards the direction in which people would be the most comfortable. The space in which it's installed this time, it doesn't have a 90 degree angle, and then it also doesn't have a clear position in which you would perform, so we made a decision of doing a diagonal performance across the space, so it was finding that balance. And I'm pretty happy about it, I think it looks good.